I'm Hannah Jones and welcome back to Masks Cast. After a short break, we are back with our interviews and information about what's been happening in the masks community this week and previously too. In this week's episode, I chat to Jane Dodd. She is a Nature Scott Marine Operations Officer and we are talking about the recent successful hatching of a flapper skate egg. And I am talking to Hannah Grist from SAMS about an upcoming event where we are combining the creative arts and marine science and how you can get involved if this is something that you're interested in. I would just like to say that a huge thank you to everyone who participated in the Mass Annual Science meeting, whether you were doing an e-poster, speaking, just attended and provided us feedback. The event was a huge success, even if it was online and we weren't able to meet face to face. We had an amazing turnout of over 500 people and we had attendees from all around the world. And uh, we had a great recall of uh, the recordings of the sessions as well. So if you weren't able to attend and you bought a ticket, you were still able to view those recordings of the talks and sessions that happened within the Mars Annual Science meeting. So um, with that, we are now helping many other um, partner organisations put their events online and help them run them successfully. And if you have an event that you're interested in moving online and would like some advice or actually the involvement of masks in making that a reality, then please contact us at our usual email address. And also check out our new page on the mask website, which is upcoming events. We have listed all the events that we know about that are publicly available, anyone can attend, um, and that are, they aren't just masks, they are happening within the UK and they cover a broad range marine science topics so please check that out and we are constantly updating that page too so keep an eye on it as well speaking of online events my first interview is with hannah grist she's the communication lead for the eu funded project blue action and we speak about the upcoming creative and marine science workshop that she is organizing and how you can get involved if this is something that you would like to participate in but first i ask hannah what is the blue action project all about yeah, so Blue Action is a uh, Horizon 2020 climate science project. So we work with partners all over Europe and our main focus is on understanding the impact of the Arctic on Northern Hemisphere weather and climate. Um, so it's a lot about climate modelling, ocean observations and essentially turning these things into climate services so we can uh, help the communities that, that need to understand what's coming in the future. Okay, excellent. And so later this month, you're having an online workshop titled Understanding Climate Complexity Through Art. And this is a workshop. And I was wondering, what is the aim of this workshop? And who are you looking to target? Who do you want to participate in this workshop? Yeah, so I'm actually really excited about this workshop. This is a really cool thing we're doing at the moment. Um, so it's in partnership with Creative Carbon Scotland, as part of their Green Teas event series. And the idea behind this workshop is that um, as scientists in the project, we're finding that we have a lot of complex, very complicated information about climate modelling or the impacts of climate um, that we struggle to maybe connect with people about because it's, you know, it's very technical, it can be difficult to understand, and a lot of it's around uncertainty and predictions into the future. Um, so what we're trying to do with this workshop is we are, want to connect some of our scientists and scientists more broadly across Scotland and, and Europe um, with artists who are maybe trying to find ways to engage the public or, or anyone um, more emotionally or intellectually with this kind of topic. So what we're hoping to do in the workshop really is just um, get artists and scientists in the same room to share perspectives, to come up with new ideas, and hopefully everyone comes out with, with some, some inspiration and some excitement about how we might be able to move these things forward. Excellent, excellent. Um, just a quick question, what does green teas mean? So you're working with uh, Creative Carbon Scotland, uh, and this is a green teas event. Yeah, so it, it, it's teas as in, you know, teasing you, not as in cup of. Um, but they, they do a really cool event series. And a lot of it is about trying to engage scientists and artists together. Um, so they have lots of, of cool things that have, that have now moved online. A lot of it's about networking and just, I guess, making these connections with people that are outside your discipline um, that might allow you to do something. Yeah, some really cool collaborations going forward. Excellent. And when is this workshop happening? So it's the 18th of November um, from two till four uh, GMT. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, it, it's open to everyone, so it's completely free. Um, and we're looking for artists and scientists uh, who, who are interested. So as a scientist, you don't have to be like super artistic. Um, you just have to be interested in learning a bit more from, from other disciplines, really. 
absolutely. And it could be a great opportunity for someone to see an example of how someone is interpreting their data into some form of art and go, actually, I have something like that. I could maybe learn from this. And then, you know, you'll be able to perform these networks with maybe other individuals and not just people in the creative industry, but other scientists as well. So it sounds like it's going to be a great, great event. And uh, we will be providing a sign up link uh, with this masterclass and also on our upcoming events page on the Mass website, too. So uh, thank, you. Thank, no, thank you, Hannah, and uh, good luck with the workshop. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> Excellent, yeah. If this is something that you would like to participate in, then please check out the link that is below this video to sign up for free and pop it in your calendar in advance. Before we move on to my second interview, I would just like to highlight that Marine Scotland Science is offering the Mars community the opportunity to use their Marine Scotland Science research vessels next year and in 2022. The deadline to submit an application of in, um, interest to do this uh, is the 12th of November at noon and uh, please check out the MAS website for more information about how to do that. And now for my second interview, this might be something that you've actually seen on BBC's Autumn Watch earlier this week, but whilst MASCast has been on a break, the teams of Nature Scott and uh, Sam's have successfully cared and released in a critically endangered flap escape individual. And now my interview is with one of the project's leads, Jane Dodge. She's a Marine um, Operations Officer at Nature Scott. And before we speak about how you even care for a flapper skate egg, we spoke about how did she even obtain the egg in the first place. So we work closely with uh, skate anglers off of Oban. Uh, and they, so they're involved with the tagging programme for us of the adults. And we'd let some of our trusted uh, skippers know that we were interested in getting an egg. Very occasionally, a female uh, is brought onto the deck of the angling vessel and she spontaneously releases an egg. Uh, so we have had reports of this from, from the anglers. Uh, so we, we said to our trusted skippers, look, you know, we'd quite like to get an egg and see how long it takes to hatch. So if you could get one for us, that would be great. So I got a, f a photo actually on my phone from one of our skippers, uh, Paul Timoney, who works down in the Sound of Jura, saying, we've got a present for you. So they uh, collected the egg and put it in a bucket. My student went down to Ardfern and collected it from them and brought it back uh, to the aquarium at Sam's where it was cared for. So it literally just turned up in a bucket for you to then suddenly... Well, well we went and collected it in a, in a cool box. With, you know, we were a bit more organised than that. <laughs> That's excellent. And so you obviously put it in a specialised kind of aquarium tank for it to be kept. And then how long did that take that process for the egg to actually hatch? And how were you able to monitor um, a species that hasn't had this happen for it before? So we we put it into a, an aquarium, not a glass aquarium. So the, the aquarium was completely blacked out. It was dark um, and it, it was kept a, a degree or so below the water entering the aquarium because we, we've seen eggs at 30 degrees. So we figured a degree or two below surface would be would be the correct temperature. So obviously that temperature changed throughout the year with the season uh, as well. Uh, what we did, uh, we, we took the egg out of its, its tank and we put it into a small plastic tank and we put it onto a light box and we took a photograph every week. Uh, later on in the process, we also started taking video because we could see uh, that the egg was, was moving around inside the egg case and, and we felt that that would be interesting for people to see as well. But uh, So we work with uh, the vets from Edinburgh Zoo on the tagging programme with St Andrews University. So while they were in Oban, uh, we thought, well, why don't we have a look at the egg uh, with ultrasound as well? That'll give us a better idea because we couldn't really see. The yolk was so big and the embryo was so small. We couldn't see how big the embryo was in the early stages. People kept saying to me, it's dead. You know, there's nothing in there. And I was like, no, no, it, it, I'm sure it's alive. But why don't we ultrasound it and we'll we'll see uh, what it looks like inside. So that was really interesting as well. And of course, you can video with the ultrasound. So we saw the embryo moving about. So we looked at it four times during the development period, but it did take 18 months to hatch. So it hatched in September. We got it in April, at the beginning of April in 2019 and it hatched in September 2020. Uh, and um, we believe that is a will first to 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 have a, an accurate estimate of, of, of that um, occurrence. The, the literature predating uh, the split of skate into flapper skate and blue skate there's three to five months so it was well off uh, that. Excellent and um, 
once it hatched what could you tell about the individual were you able to sex the individual that came out um how big is a, a newborn uh flapper skate well it was tw 28 centimeters long uh, so it's quite small um, we could see that it was a male, so uh, and we could also see, which is really interesting, that towards the end of development, uh, elasmobranchs uh, skate uh, absorbed the last of the yolk onto their ventral side. So you could see this little white patch where the the yolk had absorbed onto onto the ventral side, and they also have a, a little uh, extension to the tail, like a little whip on the end of the tail, and that's used uh, inside the egg case. Uh, for uh, moving the water around. So the horns of the egg case open uh, during the development process and the embryo creates its own uh, water flow through the egg case. And that's what the little extension at the end of the tail was for. And we could see that clearly as well. That's excellent. And then once it was hatched and you realised you had a baby skate on your hands, how long was it until it went back into the wild when you released it? Well, we had a live feed to the, the camera that was on it for the hatching. So I got up on uh, Sunday, the 20th of September and noticed from the live feed, because I was checking it lots and lots on my phone, uh, that the egg was lying on the bottom of the aquarium. Uh, and it, what we'd done is propped it up against some rocks so we, we could get a good view. Uh, skate always hatched from the anterior end of the egg case, so the camera was focused on that end of the egg case as well. So it had fallen over and it was lying flat, and I thought, oh, there's something going on here, and we didn't know whether the embryo had been moving a lot and had knocked the egg case over or what had happened. Uh, but somebody went into the lab on Monday morning, the aquarium manager went in and looked in the tank, and there was the... the uh, juvenile swimming about so uh, the next thing we had to do was mobilize quickly because we I didn't want to start feeding it in the tank because we don't really know what they eat and I didn't want it to get used to an artificial diet so we wanted to get it out into the wild as quickly as possible and we knew the little yolk patch would sustain it for a few days but we wanted to get it out as soon as possible so we dashed down to um uh, Crinan Harbour and we, re we released the egg back into the, the Loch Sunart to the Sound of Jura MPA. That's excellent, so fingers crossed for that individual. Um, so going back to your work with this species, what's next for flapper skate conservation? Well we continue the monitoring of the adults in the MPA, so we're doing that by uh, our photo ID project which is called Skate Spotter. Uh, the pit tagging project, which we do with uh, Marine Scotland, that's, so that's Nature Scott and Marine Scotland. Uh, Skate Spotter is in collaboration with SAMS. There's lots of people working on the skate project. It's very much a, a collaboration. Uh, there's work going on from St Andrews University on acoustic tagging of the skate to get more detail on where the individuals are uh, moving in the MPA. We've actually had some... Um, records of the skate moving outside the MPA. They've been picked up on acoustic receivers all the places, which is really exciting. Um, so a lot of them are resident, but they are you know, moving out of the MPA as well. Um, but recently, uh, a, a, an egg nursery was discovered in the Inner Sound near Skye, so just north of the Kyle of Loch Alsh. Um, SNH took a dive team there in March. And we're trying to learn more uh, about the other stages of the skate. So we know where the adults are, but we, we're interested in uh, learning about where the egg cases are and where the juveniles are, because they all seem to be on different habitats. And of course, we need to protect the species in all stages of its life cycle. So um, we're, we're looking into that and what detail we have on the habitat and depth that the eggs are, la are laid in, and then check uh, what the potential interaction uh, with fishing gear and things is so that we can put protection in place if we need to do that. That's everything for this week's Masterclass. I hope you enjoyed the interviews. If you have something that you would like to broadcast to the Mask community and further, then please drop me an email here. And also, if you have something that you would like to feature in our upcoming webinar series that will be restarting in January, then please, again, drop me an email and we can see where you will fit in the schedule as well.